Hey there everyone, Hitesh here, back again with another interesting video. Today we are gonna answer the most asked questions out there. What is bug bounty? How can I learn to hunt the bugs out there and can earn money from it? Why do I get duplicates when I report the bugs? Instead, why don't the people out there don't just fix the bugs instead of reporting the duplicates? If the bug was already reported, why don't they fix it? And the most important question, how reliable is life when you just do bug bounty hunting and nothing else? Stay tuned, a lot of answers are about to come. Taking first question, what is bug bounty? Okay, so when you design an application, you just work on, on a business logic or how the data model is gonna rely, how the UI interface is gonna rely, and a tons of things like that. But while working on these things, sometimes some bugs or you can say some security issues uh, just are being left out there, not intentionally, but randomly out there because this is so much huge, gigantic application, nobody can actually talk about all the security issues. So that's why some bugs are left. Now, what is nowadays scenario? A lot of people who call themselves as a bug bounty hunter or penetration tester or security researchers, they just try to analyze the website, they report them, and they sometime also expect that somebody is gonna pay for their work. Now, let's be clear on this subject, how you're gonna earn from it, then we're gonna talk about how we can learn to hunt the bug bounties. But first of all, let's talk that, should I expect money every time when I report the bugs? And my answer would be no, strictly no. You should not be expecting money out there unless you are enrolled in some kind of paid programs out there. I'm gonna talk about them as well. So first of all, when you're working as an independent security researcher and you just report some bugs out there, don't expect that the other third party person is gonna reply you politely out there. Why? Because nobody is Facebook and Google or gigantic websites. Some websites are small and some websites don't have the bug bounty programs even out there. They just will take your reports and are gonna fix the issue and are gonna say thank you. And that's actually what you are doing. You are simply allowing somebody that, hey, this is insecure and you want that to be secured. Now, some people do this bug bounty for a living. That's, that's, I won't say that it's a bad thing or it's a good thing. It's just okay-ish thing. Now, why? Now, let's come back on to the point again. Now, when you report bugs to the Google or Facebook, they do have a bug bounty program and based on the severity of your bug, they are gonna reward you. Sometimes a lousy t-shirt, sometimes a lousy pen drive, or sometimes some good amounts like $500, $1,000, or maybe even more depends on the severity of the bug. Okay, but not all the websites are gonna reply to you in the same manner. Let's just say a website has newly born, got some funding and is presenting their topics out there. Now, if you report some bugs out there, now it depends totally on them. They can take it as a good thing that yes, you have uh, gone ahead and reported this bug and we want to award you. They can give you a lousy t-shirt, but sometimes they, they might not have a such kind of penetration testing programs. They don't want you to test their application right now, so they can take reverse action on you as well. It's totally dependent on them. You have nobody to talk about, hey, why you're doing that? No, you cannot do that. Okay, and yes, there are good ways by which you can officially register on the website and they show you that, hey, this, this, this domain is for the testing. Go ahead, do whatever you can and just report the bugs out there. But don't share them on the Facebook or make a publicity stunt with them. So that's a good thing. Now, you might be saying, hey, Google is a big website. All the domains are out there and we can just hunt for any of them. No, that's not the case. Why I'm saying that? Because I've been on the both side of the court as a bug bounty hunter, as a developer as well. So I can tell you all the things out there. Okay, so now that it is really clear that not every website is out there to hunt and to report the bugs, we are not gonna get anything for that. So it's a time based. Coming back onto the programs like Hacker Earth or Bug Bounty or the bugcrowd.com are some of the website on which you can get registered. There will be a list of the websites. Some of them gives you a reward. Some of them gives you a money. Some gives a lousy t-shirt, things like that. So you can just choose, depends on your skill and your past experience that what website you're gonna choose and we are gonna earn money from that, that's easy. But another interesting question is, how can I learn to hunt the bugs out there? Now that's an interesting question. We may make a full movie out there on that. But let, right now, let's just get on to the basics. Okay, if you want to hunt the bugs, 
First of all, you should be aware of the information security statistics, practice, uh, tactics, you know, whatever you call that. But you should be aware of quite a lot of them. Now, I'm not talk talking about just the SQL injection, cross-set scripting, CSRF, and all these stuff. You should be aware of quite a lot of things. Now, one great place, in fact, two great places that I always do recommend that you should get started is DVWA, Damn Vulnerable Web Application, and WebGoat. Now, all of the experienced hackers are gonna shout at me and are gonna yell at me, hey, what are you talking? These are so uh, puny programs, so lightweight. Hey, just wait because there are beginners out there and I have to talk about them as well. So, these are the great programs by which you can learn. First of all, go ahead on the OWASP website, owasp.org. Try to understand how the bugs are working on the web application. Then for the practice, DVWA and WebGoat is a great place to get started. Don't just play around on any website that you found out there. It may be illegal and get, you can land up in some troubles. You know what I'm saying behind the bars. Okay, you got that. Okay, so now the two questions has been answered. How do you earn money from it and how do you learn for a bug bounty player? Now, I'm gonna move on to the different part of the code. Now, I'm not talking as a penetration tester, I'm talking as a developer. I have been onto a big scale development team and I know what happens when you report a bug and a bug, submitted, a bug is being submitted out there and what happens at the back end. So let's talk about them as well. Now, a lot of people report the bugs onto some great websites. First of all, thank you for that because you are trying to make a secure world out there. That's great. But why don't we fix the bugs just directly out there? No, we cannot. As a developer, of course we cannot. Why? Because I believe somehow that if you are complaining so much that why don't you fix the bug? You haven't touched the development even from a 10 feet pole out there. No, you haven't done that. If you have been on the development side, you know it really well that you cannot touch the code directly just by going out there and adding a function. No, it will break the code. And what's a good application if it breaks while the users are using them? Yes, security is important, but as much as important, but you know what's more important? The functioning of an application. Application should be up and running. There can be security issues, we can fix them, and it's a good thing to fix them, but somehow it is equally important to make sure that that application is running. And right now, most of the codes are modular. You can just work out onto a function, but again, we have to think a lot about how the business logics is going to go ahead, and if we add the security implementation, how is it going to affect uh, the data fetching and uh, how the JSON request, and a tons of things needs to be taken care. So that's why data planning is done again based on that bug and how we can secure that bug because right now the bugs are not just the SQL injections or cross-site scripting, they are very severe bugs and very complicated as well. So it takes a little bit while while you submit that. Now again, a lot of people ask me that I'm getting so much of the duplicates if the bug is already being reported, why you are just making a duplicate out there? Now let me just be clear how the functioning is working out there. Now let's just say, let's take CSRF, the cross-site request forgery vulnerability. You don't need to understand the technicals out there. But let's just say you report that bug onto this domain. For this link, A link and a B link. Obviously, when it is being reported for A link, we are aware of that vulnerability. But if you report for the B link as well, you are going to get a duplicate. Why? You might be asking, hey, that's for a different link. No. But the business logic, how the modular code is being designed, once you fix it on the A link, it's gonna fix on the B link as well. So that is why you get a duplicate and you're not gonna get paid or even get a lousy t-shirt for that. Yep, that's true. and uh, That's how the industry works out there. Now, if you'll ask me, how is the life as totally being a bug bounty hunter? I don't want to work. I just want to hunt the bugs for my lifetime. Uh, are you sure about that? Are you pretty sure about that? Because as a bug bounty hunter, the life is not much secure. I have been onto that path. I have reported some of the bugs out there. Even when the bug bounty programs were not there, you just got your name out there on the websites like Facebook. So believe me, life as a bug bounty hunter as a starting phase is really good. You can take it as a part time. Maybe you're working in a company. You just hunt a couple of bugs, earn some, let's just say $200, $500 out there. That's okay but life is not much reliable as a bug bounty hunter. At the end of the day, try to just imagine what you are doing for a company. Company has already hired some of the security specialists, but let's just say five of them, but company wants to hire 500 of them. How they can do that? Just by simply enrolling 
for a bug bounty program and you know hundreds and hundreds of people are going to test and make their application secure and they don't have to pay the salary as well just give them a lousy t-shirt or maybe hundred dollars and the work is done so that's why most of the people who are experienced in the bug bounties or in the security just leave out the uh, bug bounty things and they get more into the development security statistics and stats uh, designing of the data models that's a good thing you should move on it's a good place to get started but you should not get stuck with that obviously this talks this talks needs a little bit more talk out there so for sure more videos are going to come on the bug bounty discussion stay tuned more videos are going to come up and in case you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, do subscribe, share it so that you can help your friends in getting the bug bounties. See you out there next week.